Today we're going to be talking about the five best upgrades that you can make to your Gen 1 Galil Ace. If you're not familiar with the Ace, it is based on the reliable operating system from the original Galil rifle developed by IMI in the late 60s, which drew inspiration from the Russian AK-47 and the Finnish Valmet RK-62. Now the Ace represents 40 years of evolution to get to this point. We still have our long stroke piston system. This is a 16 inch chrome line hammer forge barrel and it's in 5.56. It is a one and seven twist. It does have a last round bolt hold, hold open, but this one doesn't have it. We'll get to that in just a moment here. It also comes with iron sights, folding stock and one 30 round PMAG. And this is the gun that I've shot a bunch of AK matches with. I outfitted the Ace about five years ago and it has been an absolute unit. All right. So the first modification you should absolutely make to the Gen 1 Galil Ace is gonna be this guy right here, or perhaps this whole thing. It's no secret that the M4 has a ton of different stock options available for it. Something to fit absolutely every person on the planet, including this dissonant arm stock, which this one thing can fit everyone on the planet. It's adjustable length of pull, adjustable comb, adjustable cant, all kinds of different adjustability built into this. And the reason that we can attach it to the Galil Ace is this adapter right here, which is the Dissident Arms High Bore Axis Stock Adapter. Now, the other great thing about this High Bore Axis Adapter, obviously it raises where the, uh, the stock attaches, gives you better control of the gun bringing that stock up into the, the area where the reciprocating mass is from the, uh, the piston system. But it also pushes this dust cover forward into the receiver rail, giving it a much tighter fit. And what that means is that when you do remove the, the, uh, the dust cover to clean the, the weapon and then put it back, it's going to return to zero much better as well. It reduces all that flex in the uh, upper Picatinny area and it just makes for an overall tighter platform. Next up, we have a handguard. This is a Midwest Industries handguard. It is M-Lock. The Galil Ace comes with a plastic handguard that has Picatinny underneath and then has these uh, rails you can slide off. And it works good. It's, it's uh, configurable if you're into Picatinny and stuff, but the market has moved away from that into uh, M-Lock. Um, this also allows people with larger frames to get farther out on the gun. It's not necessarily that important to me, but I can see how it would be important to those that do. The other big benefit is that it's smaller and it fits uh, more hands. The drawback is that it is only a place to hang accessories and to keep yourself from burning your hand on the gas tube and it doesn't even cover all of the gas tube, it covers most of it. Um, and it's still not a free flow barrel. So this is a drop in barrel. There's two attachment points for the Galil Ace from the factory, one way back here and then one that screws into the factory location on the barrel. So that's a two piece. So it's constrained here and it's constrained here. That makes for not a free float barrel and not the most accurate uh, thing around. Now that's not necessarily a function of the ACE. It's gonna be like that with any barrel that you have that is constrained in more than one uh, place. Another great update for the Gen 1 Galil Ace is the muzzle device. This one, this one is a primary arms muzzle brake slash flash hider. Uh, it works really well. From the factory, this does come with an A2 flash hider, which is a classic favorite uh, for hiding flash. Works just fantastic, uh, but you can always choose a muzzle device uh, based on your personal preferences. This is a muzzle device that I won at a match, so I just threw it on here to try it out, and it works great. Here's a bonus upgrade from the sponsor of this video, Isotune Sport. Get yourself some Bluetooth hearing protection like the Caliber BTs I'm wearing right here, and you too can listen to Taylor Swift on the range. And I'll write your name. To enter for a chance to win a set of your own, just click the link in the description, but hurry, the drawing's soon. And then finally, you're gonna to wanna to pick a good optic. This is the Gen 2 UH-1 Huey from Vortex Optics. I love this optic. I've used it on a ton of different uh, rifles and PCCs and other things like that. And it's always done really well. It, at this point, it feels like I'm at home when I'm shooting the UH-1. Which previous to getting one of these, I'd never been really been like a holographic sight guy. It is kind of uh, interesting how much it's grown on me. Yes, the Galil does come with iron sights on the, uh, the Gen 1, and they do have tritium front and rear sights, which is kind of cool. But hey, it's 2023, get a good, Get a good uh, optic, red dot optic or one to six or something like that 
for this gun and uh, and never look back. Uh, shooting iron sights is not quite the flex everybody thinks it, thinks it is. It's something good to know, but it's uh, not as fast or as useful in everyday practice. Fight me in the comments. But hands down, the best upgrade that I've made to this Galil Ace is this trigger from ALG. At the time that I installed this trigger, there was only 762 by 39 triggers available. I believe now, uh, like Dissident Arms makes a, uh, one specifically for the 556, but the trigger does not have a recess to fit the last round bolt hold open, so I had to remove the last round bolt hold open on this one. Now, for a defensive gun, I might not do that, but for a gamer gun, which is the purpose that I built this for originally, uh, totally fine. So when you are out, you just drop the magazine like normal, feed it, rack it in, and you're good to go. That said, the trade-off is totally worth it because the trigger on this thing is like two pounds, five ounces. It's very, very light. It is one of the, the nicest triggers I have in all of my guns and it's on an ace, which is really cool. Yeah, that's cool. That said, you gotta make your own decisions. I knew that this would work in here. If you're not familiar with the operation of the Galil Ace, obviously don't put a trigger in there that is not going to be for that gun. Seriously, don't do what I do. One of the other great things about shooting the Ace in the 5.56 is that it does take Stanag mags, so I can use just like my typical three gun belt setup that I normally use. Safari Land ELS belt with a bunch of ELS clips and LAG tactical mag pouches. These upgrades turn the Gen 1 Ace into an absolute ripper of a rifle, a rifle that handles well and is truly fun to shoot. It did have a few drawbacks as well, mostly stemming from that non-free float barrel, but fortunately IWI took a lot of feedback from customers and users and rolled out a bunch of improvements for the Gen 2 Ace, making this bad boy obsolete and ultimately discontinued. And if you want to check out the video that I did on the Gen 2 Galil Ace, you can watch that right here. Thanks for being here.